Hello and welcome to round, I think it's round six now, is it, of Robbo's Racing League at Mugello. And as you can see, we are in qualifying. And we're not actually showing my fastest qualifying lap because I didn't manage to get a lap done. As you can see, I'm just showing pretty much all the mistakes I can make in that get taking my lap off me. As we go into Casanova here, push in the front end, run wide, off the track we go. So as you can see, I was also struggling quite a bit in this session. Uh, Mugello, obviously, as I say, every time I do a race with Mugello, I don't, I'm not a massive fan of Mugello and I struggle at it quite a lot. You can see we're going to Casanova making the same mistake again. Uh, the front end was feeling really dodgy as well in the wet and uh, yeah, so we started last because we didn't even get to do a lap. But uh, Jack was on pole, Dibby second, VSR Mikey third, Cringy fourth, Tommy D in fifth, Sanuka Greg in sixth, seventh for Neil, eighth for Gidzi, and then they go me with no time where I probably could have got seventh or something like that if I actually managed to put a lap together but uh, you know I couldn't so whatever I suppose slightly last on the grid it's not it's not too bad because it is Magello so you can use such streams to keep you in it but we are starting the race I can see Jack Hammer is on pole obviously like I said before and we are all the way at the back so hopefully we can try and get some positions don't want to finish the race last again don't want to have another repeat of Le Mans really although it is wet it's now wet track in the race so we're waiting for the lights to go out Lights and away we go. We've had a semi decent start. We've passed Gidzi already off the line. So up into eighth place. You can see Neil a little bit in front of us there. Well, they're going uh, quite a few riders wide there. They go towards turn one. They're probably going to outbreak each other into, well, outbreak themselves, trying to outbreak each other as we're going to turn one. You can see a few wide. Oh, I think that's Tommy on the inside. Tommy Deesberg to take the lead. You can see Jack went wide, so did Cringy, so did Dibby, but someone's on the grass there. Up the inside of, I think that's Cringy there. Up into sixth place now behind Tommy D. You can see Jack as well. Jack's down, down to 5th, so Jack's not on pole. He's down to 5th uh, place now. I'm going to try and make that 6th if I can, because I, uh, I felt quite confident in the first sector, really. I mean, I know I made a couple of mistakes there, but in these first few corners, I felt all right. You can see Snooker Greg's in the lead there. Uh, Mikey seems to be lagging all over the place. He's, uh, checked up, he's checked up Jack and Tommy D. So that's put us up into 4th place. We go wide once again to Casanova. He's absolutely cut Casanova. He's got to have a penalty, surely, for that. You can see, trying to go around the outside there. Is Tommy D, but he couldn't quite get it done. So we're in fourth place now. Into Arabiata 1. Oh, the inside goes Jack. That was a bit of a Banzai move. He wasn't going to get that one done. So back up into fourth place we go. I don't know who that's trying to go around the outside. I think it's Cringy. We can see Snooker Greg's down to, down to third. So he's the next target. Cringy going around the outside on the grass. He braked on the grass and he didn't crash. How did he manage that? I don't know. Jack's at the inside. Back up the inside of Jack. Are we going to get back up the inside of Cringy? No, we're not. So we're in fifth place. So it's been an absolute amazing start, really. Uh, amazing battles as well. You have to see. Uh, Greg's going defensive up ahead. You can hear a bike up the inside. I've got a little bit wide. Oh, a bit of a tap from Jack up the inside. He goes. Will he finally get the move done? I was trying to run it around the outside with this Yamaha. But the cat just has a bit more power. So here he goes. I've ran wide to be on Detty 1. Cuts the cover on the BMW 2. Nearly loses the rear. I think Mikey did the same because, look, he's got even less of a run than me. I think he probably did it worse. So he's going to the last corner. He's also using the old school ride. So he clips the curb. So we're right behind him. So perhaps we could have a look at maybe trying to attack him. But we couldn't quite get it squared off. That's not really how you ride on this game. It was more of the previous game. We've got some stream on Mikey here, so maybe we'll have an attack on him into turn one. Maybe we won't. Uh, that brake light, you can see, it reflects on the water, and you can see it on the wheel. I kept thinking that was a proximity arrow the whole race. It kept uh, putting me off. It took me a few laps to get used to it, so it wasn't whole race, then, I guess, but it was quite a while. We've ran a bit wide through turn one. It's like, I'll allow Neil to come up the inside. I think it's Neil behind us. No, it doesn't. Jack also went, went, uh, went, ride, went wide in front. There we go, if I can actually speak. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. But yeah, Jack tried to go for a move on Cringy, I think, and he went wide through the first corner. We're still running this sixth. We're not too far behind Mikey here. If there's a few mistakes up in front, we might be able to get... Oh, Gidzi's hit us at the back. Gidzi's gone down, I think. Yes, he has. He got that in way too hard. I think he tried to get the inside of Neil. And, oh. So, yes. Uh, VSR Mikey's has gone flying for no reason. It's a bit strange. Uh, a bit further on in lap two. But as we're starting lap three now, we've got someone in our such stream. Who is it? It's Tommy D on that Tech 3 KTM flying past the slides of Fusana. Still, we've cut him up a little bit in the braking zones. I didn't mean to do that, by the way, so apologies if you are watching. Uh, but up the inside he goes. He tries to get the cutback, but we've ran it around the outside on the Yamaha. He's going to try to go around the outside again. A pretty good move there through Luco. He's done it, but is he going to be able to get squared off through turn three? Poggio Seco. He's gone a little bit wide on getting on the power. Bit of contact there out of turn three. Back up into fifth place once again, hitting the brakes. We've gone a little bit wide, but not really enough to get a bike through there. Get the bike stopped. Oh, bit of contact. He's gone on the grass there. I was kind of parking it on the apex. I knew I'd made a mistake. And uh, we had a bit of contact. He went on the grass into Casanova now. Is he going to have an attack into Savelli? Don't know. We've run a bit wide into Savelli. So it's definitely going to allow him. We've gone completely off the track. He's probably going to come through then. 
Is he going to swoop around the outside and tie Bielsa one? Yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Beautiful move from Tommy D there around the outside and tie Bielsa one. Even though it wasn't me pulling off the move, I'm happy with that. Oh, and uh, Neil, Neil's just kind of barged his way through to Bielsa two. Less elegant, but still pretty well done to him. Uh, we ran a little bit wide through Scarparia there. And then through Pelagio. We've got to try and close up to Neil as much as we can. But we've got to try and stay on the back of him. I think it's Gidzi behind who obviously crashed. So 150.6 there for Cringy. 157.3 for us. We were five, uh, five tenths, so half a second behind Neil in front. So we go over the line again. We're now 1.6, so we lost a lot on that lap. 1.1 seconds there to lose on that lap. Quite a bit. So we come over the line on the next lap. 1.1, so we took a little bit back. We took a bit back off him. Look about half a second off him, I think, there. So we go over again. Gidzi's had another crash. And then 51.8. 1.3 seconds there. So he's lost. He's gained another two tenths on us. What will it be now? 1.4. So he's gained another one. So we are losing time to Neil in front. So we go over the line for the next lap. 1.8. So yeah, Neil is definitely getting away now. So we're about to start lap 10 then. So we're starting lap 10 now. And 1.6 behind. So yeah, it's yeah, he's definitely probably going to get away. We're not really catching him enough, or like really at all. We're catching him occasionally. But I think we're going to stay on board here because I think lap 10 was my fastest lap of the race. So we are going to stay on board for the entire lap. Since I didn't get to show a qualifying lap, I thought that's what I'd do. Dibby's crashed. I think Dibby was leading the race, and he made a mistake. Dropped down to third and then crashed there, so he's down to fifth now. So he'd actually be in front of Neil. Because me and Neil, we kind of dropped off the back of the field. So we're 1.7 seconds behind. So it's not started off great, it must be said. But I really was pushing on to catch Neil. Uh, I felt like I maybe could have done it if there was a, if I could keep this pace up a little bit more, basically. The pace I did on this lap, if I kept that up, I probably would have been able to maybe catch him, but really this was just a one-off lap where I got most of the things I usually get wrong right. Pretty good run through Abiata 1 there, taking it right out of the curb, really. It's quite brave. 1.4 seconds, you can see we are taking a bit of time out of him now. Sliding through Abiata 2, hit the brakes into Scarpario, probably one of the most tricky, tricky corners on the circuit. Flicking the bike over there through Pelagio. On the exit of Pelagio. Going down towards Corintio. I don't actually know how to pronounce this one. Corinto. Might be that one or Corinto. I don't know. Whatever. Turn 12 at Magello anyway. It's an Italian name I can't pronounce. So we go up towards Biondetti now. Almost on the grass there. So almost a big mistake. Through Biondetti 1. Flicking over for Biondetti 2. So 1.339 seconds now. So we have taken a bit of time out of him. So we go towards Buccini. Jack does the fastest up at 48.6. So you can see, um, well you'll see when I go over the line, a 48-4 uh, there for Tommy D, how far off the pace I really was off these guys. Like I said, I struggle with Jello, uh, I struggle with the front end of the bike on this game, and you need grip on the front to go quick in the wet, so uh, a 50.5 there, so we're still 1.339 behind actually. But yeah, you can see how slow we are compared to the leaders. So we're about to start the final lap, he's two seconds in front because I kind of just throttled it off because I knew I wasn't going to catch him. And over the line, you can see I picked up a little penalty on the last lap. Neil had a crash apparently after the line. He probably did a little wheelie or something. But yeah, in the end, we weren't going to catch him. So it was another disappointing race. Seventh position here. Obviously, we did gain two places off the line since we started last. But not really good enough there. So Jack won the race ahead of Cringy in second. Tommy D in third. Fourth for Snooker Greg. Fifth for Dibby. Sixth for Neil. Seventh for myself, obviously. And eighth for Gidsey. I think VSR Mikey left the lobby in the end because he was, I think he had another crash where he just kind of flew off for no reason. I think it's probably a lag related crash. But if we look at the championship standings, Jack continues to lead with 126 points ahead of Dibby in second by 38. Cringy now closes to one point behind Dibby there. So pretty good fight there. If you, if you look down, I actually am on the front page now because I'm in ninth place. One point behind Demons, obviously. He's not racing anymore, so we should overtake him in the next one. Uh, Neil is any. A few points in front of us there as well, six. So it probably will be a bit of a battle maybe for the rest of the season between me and Neil. I'm looking at Snooker Greg. He's, what, 18 points in front for the rest of the season. That's probably, you know, a reasonable target, I would say, to target Greg there. So I think that's what I'm going to do, bring a target fifth. Obviously, I'm not, well, I never, I knew I wasn't going to win going in. Uh, I thought maybe I could try and target third or fourth in the championship. Obviously, so far, it's not really gone our way, obviously. We missed a race um, in Austin, which didn't help. We disconnected in Qatar, which would have been our best result. Because we disconnected, well, actually, from second position, because Dylan had disconnected just before, which would have been, obviously, a fantastic position to have. And with 42 points, having another 20 would actually put us fifth in the championship. So there you go, obviously, with Austin as well. I, I felt really strong at Austin. But, uh, yeah, I kind of uh, 
forgot about the race and went out instead, so, you know, whatever. <laughs> uh, these things happen sometimes. So, yeah, I missed the uh, the race in Austin. And then there's been a couple of other things to think our way. Obviously, Le Mans, you know, I just didn't feel that comfortable there. Same with here. About more comfortable here than at Le Mans, as you can see, I wasn't so much all over the place. And I didn't crash. I was, more, I was much more consistent in this race. I didn't crash, but uh, unfortunately... That's not really good enough. Obviously, if we look at the second page of the standings, uh, Stealing Set is in 10th there. Sacred Maker in 11th. Stick Vortex Talks. So, Gidsey's in 13th place. I think uh, most of the people, I think only Gidsey on this page was actually in the race. Uh, and he's in 13th, equal on points with Stick Vortex. So, it could go either way for those two. Um, haven't seen. Well, Stick Vortex was probably in the previous race. I'm not sure. I don't always keep tabs on it, but uh, I have corrected I have corrected Gidsey's nationality now. I think I had it down as British before. Uh, just be an editing mistake, I assume, but it is now Dutch. So, yeah, it's worth noting. But I hope you enjoyed that one. It was a bit more interesting than uh, the previous ones, that's for sure. Obviously, we had a nice little battle at the beginning of the race. I didn't, after probably the third lap, I wasn't really doing anything. I was going around on my own, which was a little bit boring for myself. But there were some battles going on, so it wasn't too bad for you guys. And hopefully, we should be stronger in Catalonia. But it will be a while before that, because uh, we're taking a break for a few weeks, because Rob who is the uh, the runner, obviously it's Robbo's Racing League, so the host of the league, there we go, that would be the correct word to use. The host, uh, he's moving house, so he doesn't know when he's going to have internet and stuff, so it's going to be a while. Uh, hopefully we will be starting ME, MESGP soon as well, uh, on PC, so that hopefully we should get some more League Race videos coming out soon with that as well. But like I said, I hope you enjoyed this one, I hope you enjoyed the rest of your day, and I shall see you in the next one.